Yesterday we talked about electric fields. Don't think we did much. We have mapped of that yet. everything from chapter 15 that is needed for this first electrical assignment. Uh, we're going to be looking at the electric field math, a couple of principles of need to apply with that, or a couple of examples, and that'll mostly be it. General announcements. Next week we will have the normal lab again. Um, as I say otherwise, uh, chapter 15 assignments are due very end of Tuesday. We'll spend Tuesday looking at specific questions that you guys have, specific questions you have questions about, and moving on to chapter 16, which is more about moving more into the types of things that we tend to think of as electricity. So before we get started, any questions from anyone about anything? charged particles give off some type of an E field, and this red marker is nearly out of ink, which has nothing to do with electricity. That's right. Now this is going to be one proton. Since it is one proton, what do we know about its charge? this one just yet because we don't know the force that this is exerting and we don't know the uh, charge of a test charge in the field. We only know the Q source. So I'm writing this up for completely sake, but 
the full thing that we will be using right now is k times q source divided by r squared. strength are we looking at? I got one point four three eight times ten to the negative one. Very good. And what are the units of electric? that overcome this particular spot would have a strength of this. Next question. Each line. Sorry? You like each line? Each. Well, with E fields, the, the, the number of lines depends on artistic license and how many you can fit on the page. Um, each, the concentration of lines is, I'd say, the more important variable. Notice that very close to the object, if we just zoom in right over top of it, the lines are very compact right here. But if we look in this region of space, this line would continue this way, but this line would have drifted this way. So there's just a few more lines over here. They radiate outwards evenly, and so the further out you go, the less concentrated the field is. But again, like gravity. So along those lines, let's look at another point in space, one centimeter away. What is the E field there? Like we still start from the beginning. Yep. So now we are two centimeters away from the proton. different in that version if we were further away. What's the only thing that's different? The radius. Okay. The radius term is underneath and it becomes squared. So instead of plugging in one centimeter converted to one meter, now it's going to be two centimeters converted to meters. So that would be point zero 0.02 squared. And what is that going to do to the field strength? Even though 6 is a bigger number than 5, 
this number is a small blur answer. And fun thing about this number, multiply it by four and tell me what you get. The first one. Right. So being twice as far okay, away affects the field strength by a fourth. So the further and further away from a charged particle you get, the exponentially weaker its E field is just naturally going to be. Wait, twice as far away gives a field strength of, you said a fourth? Correct. Yeah, we went twice as far away and the field is now four times weaker. We divided it by four. On the other hand, if we instead drifted twice as close, if we were at half of it, half a centimeter, the field strength would be four times as strong. So can you do that? Now, they give you multiple lengths, and then you can just read the line by four. Or I mean, I guess if it's a multiple. If not, then you probably just have to solve it, right? Depends on the question. As long as the proton stays the same, and the only thing you're changing is distance from the proton, then it's just going to be a function of how does the radius change squared? So, that is the field produced by a single particle. The thing about electric fields is, they are technically vectors because they point somewhere. It's a little bit of a weird kind of a vector because one particle is giving off field in all directions. So, it's not really the E field goes north or just east, just north and just east most of the time. One particle radiates out on all sides, more often than not. So when E fields are a vector, we really only care about whether or not the vector is out or in. That said, because it's a vector, it can still, we still need to do a vector addition when there's multiple sources of E-fields in the same region of space. So, I don't, wanna, don't change anything in your notes. I'm just working off of limited board space. I'm going to tweak this slightly and we're going to rework it and look at it again. Let's say that this region of space isn't empty anymore. We're going to drop a proton right there. So the two protons are two centimeters apart, and there's a region of space directly between the directly in the middle of them that has no object in it. Now First question, this is just one proton that is now one centimeter away from this spot. If that's the only thing we care about, first question is, what is the strength of the E field produced by just this proton at this spot? The 1.4. Okay, yes, one proton one centimeter away will produce this much E field. So, if if the first, if our question is simply, what is the E field at this spot produced by this proton, then it'll be the same answer. Things get a little weirder though, if you start trying to figure out the total E field at this spot from all particles. So, first, I'm just asking what your first instinct. Now that both of these protons are here, what do you think is the total E field strength at that middle point? Probably higher. Oh, oh, okay. I would think double, but that's probably not true. Zero. It's zero. Um, it cancels. They're vectors, same magnitude but opposite direction, cancels out. So in this weird situation, the middle point has no E field in it. Okay, question. Yes. Um, proton, proton, spot. 
Do you double down? Oh, proton, proton here, proton here, and this is empty space? Yeah, but the, that spot is like right in the middle of the, like, like, but that way. Is it still between two protons? Is it still? No. Come draw what you're saying, because I'm not, I'm, I am having trouble picturing it. You can pick up a different marker. If, if it was an electron, would it still be zero? It would. So what's like in the simulation thing, like when there's that whole like dead space? Mm -hmm. So let me write up these rules as I'm saying them because I realize I don't have the slides right now. Rule one, fields, field lines are vectors. Lines are vectors, opposite direction, but same magnitude, and cancel out. We'll get to this, I promise. This is a good question. It's a very good question. I want to show another visual of this real quick because the notes goes quasi-electric field drawings in them that someone, I believe I've shown you a couple of these. I'm on your good job. Have I explained how this picture was taken yet? Okay. So this is just one current source that is creating one positive electric the iron shavings in the picture are just aligned to that E field. This is just one particle. So this is like what we were looking at a second ago, just the single proton. And notice the field lines are more highly concentrated right next to it. And the further away you get, kind of the muddier things are. There's less defined lines. The, the iron shavings are no longer in straight lines anymore. When you have a positive next to a positive, you get this situation. So these are two fields that are repelling themselves. And you probably get the same visual if they were both negative as well. But the main thing to take away from this is right next to each particle, the lines are pretty highly defined. And up in here, you can kind of see that the lines are literally working against each other. They don't want to overlap. Plus doesn't add up a plus, so they're literally pushing away from each other. But what's going on in that middle space? Nothing. The fields are just canceling out, and the iron in that little spot doesn't really do one thing or the other. It's just sitting there. Which, Why isn't it empty there? There's still, so this picture was created because they, the way that they did it, they literally just got a bath of oil, sprinkled a bunch of iron dust in it, and then shoved electrodes into it with specific charges. So this is basically just a rod sticking out this way that the camera doesn't see because of its perspective. So it's not empty because there is something floating on the oil. It's that, that, excuse me, I apologize. The things floating there just aren't lining up to the electric field lines because they've canceled out. And I want to briefly touch on proton and electron first. It will absolutely be a drawing. It's a very good question. This is two things repelling that have the same charge. This is two things of opposite charge. 
the lines in the middle are a lot more better defined. That's because if this was the proton, it's exerting field lines out of itself. If this is an electron, that field would point in the opposite direction. So that would go into the electron. So one going in this direction plus one going in this direction just creates two in this direction, as opposed to one and one equals zero. But you would never double because it's, it can't be the same thing. It would be like an electron. So one more time. Like, you, you know how like in the math we're talking about like doubling and that? Like here you wouldn't be able to just double the electric oh. field charge because there are there are different charges. They are different charges, and we are a specific distance from each of them. Let's do a little bit of math, and, and don't change the drawings in your notes. I'm just changing what's on the board. Let's make this the electron and just do a little bit of math for it. So, that electron, right now we're, let's start by only examining the E field this electron produces at this spot, ignoring everything else surrounding it. Just the field produced by that electron by itself. So, E field from one electron, one centimeter away, a is the same. The charge of the electron is now negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. And we are 0 0.01 meters away. Square that. And so the numerical answer for just that electron by itself is 1. So yeah, just the negative. Correct. So same magnitude, but different direction. That said, once again, E field vector directions aren't positive and negative like north versus south. They're positive and negative meaning inward or outward. Wait. Yes. So when we had the two positive ones, that means that one of them had to have a negative charge. Yeah, like I get this canceled out, but because there are different directions, where do I get the negative to be like, oh, cancel out? I had to. That's a little bit of the disconnect between the drawing and the math. Oh, you can't do that. This is why I recommend pictures, as many as you need. And I will include pictures as well. You'll You'll have some, you should create some of your own, some of your own as well, so that they're in the way that your brain understands. The math, there's kind of a disconnect between the picture and the math. Because the math gives us positive and negative strictly in, form, in the terms of inward or outward from the source. So these being positive says outward from the source. This being negative is inward to the source. When there was two protons here, they're both exerting fields outward. So they're the same direction in that they're out from their sources, but here in this middle point, those two field lines that would collide at that middle spot are technically, geometrically speaking, in opposite directions. So those cancel. So meanwhile, even though this is a negative number from the electron, that simply means inward, so these arrows are actually in the same direction as these arrows. So, I guess tip number two, be aware of math following discount.
these are vectors, so they do add up like vectors, but the math treats these vectors as slightly different to how we would on the drawing. So in this particular case, the proton is creating this much E field at that spot. The electron is creating the same magnitude of E field and towards the electron. So in this scenario, it's going to double right there. No. But the E field from the electron never even got to the spot because it was always pointing inward. You know? One more time. <laughs> okay. So the electron that you feel like it goes inward, right? The arrow is going inward. Mm -hmm. But the spot is in the middle, right? Of the proton and electron. And so yeah, like the E field arrows of the proton are gonna go through that spot, but the one from the electron never really went through the spot since you're already going towards the electron. This is kind of the problem with the way that we draw the electron. It's, it is creating a field outwards in all directions. So these arrows should go off infinitely. But like pulling in? Correct. So like really it's not arrows? that it's it's not like a black hole that's sucking things into it. It's still creating field in all directions. It's just the field is of the opposite charge. Because like there would still be blue arrows coming in like this and red arrows. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. One single electron, technically speaking, like if this electron was real right here, it would technically be exerting a field as far out as the sun. It'd just be so far away that it wouldn't do anything. And weirdly, the arrow, we draw all the arrows from the perspective of what a positive charge will do in this field. This is what this part of the formula is for. All of these drawings are based on if you, you, if you drop a positive test charge into the field and then watch what happens. So in this situation, if we took another baby proton. Wait, why, why does it have to be positive? Because the physicists who developed this said, oh, positive, let's just stick with that as our reference point for literally everything because it's positive, I guess. We live in a very weird world if we decide that electrons are positive instead. And, and which one's positive and which one's negative is entirely just human assigned. As long as you're consistent, it wouldn't matter which one, which. But if we took a baby proton and stuck it right here, what direction is it going to move in? So the arrows just represent drop an electron in, where's it going? Sorry, drop the proton in, yeah. where's the electron in? So every single line from the lab, every line on the iron shaving diagrams, those are just paths that an electron will follow going from point A to point B. Do they come Protons? Technically speaking, if you slam a proton and electron into each other hard enough, you, mean you, can? you can. On some alchemical level, a neutron is a proton and electron fused together. And sometimes they fuse back together, sometimes a neutron will spontaneously break down into both. That's at least one figure. And it is okay if this is weird and tricky, because as much as E fields exist in real life, and as much as you've interacted with them, you can't see them. You see what they do, but you can't see these field lines, that's for sure. At least I can't, I haven't met a human that could. So it is okay if this is just a little bit strange. Physics is a strange thing. And in here stumped at a lot of the things that the told me because I just had no frame of reference for it. So I'd like to treat this mostly as just a vector puzzle. 
based from your drawing. I'm going to go over to your drawing now. Wait, 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 sorry. Here, the E field, what, which formula do, do I use? For the combined E field? Yeah. At that spot. At that spot, if you want to combine E fields, it's vector addition. At that spot, if I want to, okay, so I would do the, the second part of the formula to like two sources, and I would add. Okay, let me back up just a little bit. We've calculated the two E fields acting on that spot. Mm -hmm. So now we need to perform vector addition. And so like that, I'm going to draw those vector lines on this particle. So the proton is exerting 1.438 times 10 to the negative fifth units per coulomb in the positive x direction. The electron is exerting 1.438 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons per coulomb, also in the positive x direction if we are labeling our axes based on the old positive x and the old positive y. And that so, is the, combi the combined field. Correct. They are both acting on that one spot. And like, like if two forces were both pushing on the same box in the same direction, they just add together. This is vector addition. You, you can't find the E field of just the, okay, this is, this is weird, but tell me if this is possible, okay? E field, do you only have to have, do you have to have a spot to measure off from both proton electron or proton proton electron electron to be able to calculate the E field or could you do only the E field of the negative electron but you also have a positive, I mean a proton. So kind of the radius for the negative one would be like zero because you're trying to see the impact of the positive on the negative. Is that a thing? It is a thing. Really? Yes. And that thing is our electric Coulomb law. Oh, wait, radius. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, and then. Okay. Good. Cool. This tells us force between two charged particles based on what their charges are and how far apart they are. This is exactly the same formula. We just took one of the charges and put it under the F. This is from the perspective of what is the force between two charged things. This is from the perspective of what is one of those charges doing at one region of empty space that doesn't have a charge in it yet. The field in this example is what creates the force in this version and vice versa. Wait, so can you repeat the empty space thing? Right now, this little patch of the universe is empty. There's no charged particle in it. Despite that, each of these other charged particles is exerting field out of itself, and those fields are both independently going to travel to this patch of the universe. So fields can be exerted into empty space. Those fields will then exert electric force on any charged, charged objects in that region of space. Okay, so you're, that's the electric or field effect on the empty spot of both objects or whatever. Correct. Okay. So both of these objects are doing the same thing to this one patch of the universe. Mm -hmm. Like if two people were both pulling in the same direction on one box. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. 
They're both exerting something in the same direction, ultimately. And so at this one spot, both of these things are rushing through this patch of the universe in the same direction, like water flow. We already had a river here with this much flow, and then another river is going to come through with this much flow. So at this one combined spot, as the second river flows into it as well, the combination in that one spot will be the sum. Can you do that with not equal radius distances? You can add them together, yes. Because it's just vector addition? It's but just you would have addition. different numbers, right? Yes. In that case, these probably wouldn't cancel out. You probably have like a 1.5 and then like a 0.5, let's say that, and you solve for each thing and then vector addition. Right. Okay. So. I want to at least show a couple other samples real quick before we go. More geometry based than algebra based. I'm glad you drew this picture because I can use this to look at vector addition that isn't two opposites and isn't perfectly balanced. The algebra is the algebra. The algebra can tell us, you know, E field created by this this far away, you can agree by this, this far away. But the drawings help with the vector addition and the actual image of where is it going to go next. So I'm just going to draw a straight line from this particle to that spot. I draw a straight line from this particle to that spot. This spot is now the center of our coordinate system. The field from the first object is going to continue on in the same direction at the same angle of incidence. And the second one will also continue on at the same angle of incidence. I'm going to use phi instead of theta for the one. Phi? It's a different Greek letter. So these are the two vectors that we would ultimately need to add together, this one and this one. And just for simplicity's sake, if these are both protons and this spot is, say, three meters to the left of each of them and equidistant vertically speaking, what direction are these going to point once they add up? Let me say that a little bit differently. Oh, oh, just horizontal, right? Right. So, given, given these numbers, thus making these triangles the same, Oh, I wrote a picture in the wrong spot, sorry. If these two triangles are identical, their vertical axes will cancel out because they're in opposite directions, but the horizontal axes will just add together because they're in the same direction. And so the combined E field at this spot is just going to point in the X direction. I don't even know what that means. Does that mean that you have to find <laughs> that component, like do some trick, find that it's component. Trick, yeah. Yes. And then, but, but they like kind of cancel out, but like, no, no, they don't because it's still there. I don't know. The vertical components are going to cancel out because vertically these two are facing each other. If they're both protons exerting field outward from themselves. The vertical components will cancel, but they're both exerting horizontally out this way. So those components will add together because they're in the same direction. So add x components. Oh, you add x you components both. and you add the y components. This is vector addition yes. again. Okay. Just in this case, the y cancels out. Correct. In this specific instance. Yeah. 
Um, jumping off of that, last kind of a sample I want to show you. We don't need to do all the math because it's the end of the period and I don't want to hold you. I do at least want to sorry, rewind, look at the concept of all. You push a button and it activates like three times. This is a similar drawing to the one that you've made, except we've kind of got a little square here. Two of the corners are negatives of, a, of the same magnitude. One corner is a positive of twice that magnitude. Looking at this, don't necessarily care about the magnitude, but what direction will the combined E field right here point? of these particles is, if we look at them separately, going to be exerting field here. Based on this negative, I should make that, we have two negative ones and one positive two. I'm just taking the Q out and simplifying. From this negative's perspective, what direction is its field going to point at this spot? Very good. Strip that way. What direction is this one's field going to point to this spot? Straight down. Will these have the same magnitude? Yes. yes. They're equidistant from this spot, and the charges source are the same size. What about this one? Okay, it's going to point up at a slant. And that particular slant is going to have an X component that way and a Y component that way, and it'll be pointing at 45 degrees. So the red is in direct opposition to the blues here. Ultimately, what this will come down to is which set is stronger here. And to at least get us to a conclusion, this is the end of the period, I don't want to hold you on a Friday. Factoring in that the red is technically further away, because it has to go across the square, and that there's two blues opposing it, which side do you think is going to win? The blues. Like, in what direction? Well, when you do the trig, you find out this red piece is smaller than this blue piece, and this red piece is smaller than this blue piece, which means the net force, the net field, will ever so slightly go that way. I drew the, sorry, I drew, my picture here is a little out of scale. So, this is 
one side of square. Mm -hmm. This is other side of square. The middle point here, if I was just swinging this around, that would form an arc, a round arc, not a square corner. So if I do this here instead, like this, the extra corner should be right here, basically. Mm -hmm. But just one meter in a straight line from here does not go that far. Because if I just swing around from this axis, I form an arc, like a quadrant of a circle, that does not go out that far. Okay. Okay. You, your frustrations here are valid. Because on top of the fact that you've never seen an e field in your life, I have to remember geometry. Which is why we're going to continue talking about this on Tuesday, and we will look at homework problems together on that day. You'll be working on them, you start them. If you come prepared with questions and tell me which one is confusing, that will help you know what to focus on. And then, mercifully, we will move on to circuits, which I think is usually a bit more appealing because you've worked with them before and you want to turn a light bulb on. So have a great weekend. You're working on the homework. And please, please, please let me know whatever questions you have as you have them. And stay warm and stay dry. And have a wonderful day. And did you want me to send the pictures or to your email? That would be just fine.